In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray together. My adorable Jesus, may our feet journey together. May our hands gather in unity. May our hearts beat in unison. May our souls be in harmony. May our thoughts be as one. May our ears listen to the silence together. May our glances profoundly penetrate each other. May our lips pray together to gain mercy from the Eternal Father. Amen. Welcome to day two of this Easter Tridum. And we reflected yesterday on the four cups of the Monday Thursday service of the Passover meal. And we saw how Jesus, after three cups, left the meal, in a sense, midway, incomplete. It's almost sacrilegious, like we discussed, where imagine if the priest stops before the consecration and leaves the Mass and says, uh, you know, and leaves it half done. And that's somewhat what Jesus did. When he went into the garden and they sang the the hymns of praise, the Psalms 116, 17, 18, uh, which was the tradition at that time. And he went into the Mount of Olives, went into the Garden of Gethsemane. Gethsemane, the press of the olives, the oil press. And as he is in that moment of being crushed, which is exactly what the oil press would do to the olives, Jesus is experiencing in his spirit. And he says, Father, if it is possible, take this cup away from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. How many times have we been in a struggle? How many times have we been in a desolate situation? How many times have we been desperate and said, Father, take this cup, take this cup, take this cup. But we forget to add that last part that Jesus adds. Yet not what I want, but what you want. That we have always focused on God as the giver always on his hands and not his face. And yet you and I who come to the adoration daily, 
know that that word adora, adoration, means to the face, that the Lord desires us to look at His face. And yet, sometimes we tend to focus on His hands, the giver of the gift, not the person, not the giver, but the gift is what our focus is often. And Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane is crushed under the weight of our sin, is crushed under this impending passion, death that he can experience in his spirit. He knows what is to come because he said, unless a grain of wheat falls and dies, only then it will bear much fruit. He said that unless the Son of Man is killed and, 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 and taken to his death. So he knows what is befalling him. And so in his humanity, he prays, Father, take this cup away from me. And yet at that moment, he was fully human and fully divine. And he looks to the Father and says, Not my will, but thine be done. And so many times, we are like those three apostles, sleeping when the world needs prayer, sleeping when all around us, things are going topsy-turvy. The Lord is inviting us to prayer, to watch with Him one hour. And yet we become like Judas. Judas, if you remember, and it's an extremely interesting connection with the Joseph of the Old Testament. The Joseph was the only son who was beloved by the father out of all his brothers. Joseph was given that coat of many colors. Joseph was given the promise of being beloved and yet Joseph was sold for 20 pieces of silver and Joseph was delivered uh, to those traders and Joseph was then uh, put, as it were, uh, in the land of death, oblivion. And then he was picked up to sit at the right hand of Pharaoh. Prefiguring in so many instances the life of Jesus, pointing to Jesus, pointing to Jesus who was sold, pointing to Jesus who was beloved of the Father, pointing to Jesus who went into oblivion, pointing to Jesus who was then lifted up, raised to be seated at the right hand of God. And yet the one who sold him, if you know your Old Testament scriptures, was Judah. Judah, which means praise. The word Judah means praise. Judah would always lead the procession because praise always goes first. And yet Judah, from which we get the word Judas, was the one who used his lips to betray his brother, who sold his brother. And now Judas uses his lips to kiss his master, to betray his master. How do you and I use our lips? How often the word of God rings through. These people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far away from me. It is true of my life. And I invite you to see if it is true of yours. It's so easy to praise God. It's so easy to speak. It's so easy to prophesy using mere words. But are our hearts truly with Jesus? Or are we like that clanging symbol that Paul talks about in 1 Corinthians 13? Is really love guiding all that we do? Or is it to be appreciated, to be acknowledged, to be famous, to be praised by others? Judah means praise. And the lips of Judas are what gave Jesus into the hands of those who wanted to kill him. The lips, as St. Augustine says, are the ones when we are purpled with the blood of Jesus become the gateway of the human body. The lips are the gateway. If we allow the body and precious blood of Jesus, which we reflected on Monday, Thursday, to truly purple our lips, then it blocks Satan from entering into our lives. If we allow our lips to be consecrated, the prophets of the Old Testament asked for that hot coals because the lips were not purified, the tongue was not purified. How many of us in the way we speak, in the way we deal with people, struggle with our speech? And the Lord is inviting us to see where are our hearts. Are they truly with Jesus? Or at the first instance, we run away. At the first instance, we fall asleep. At the first instance, we deny Him. At the first instance, we betray Him. Because we cannot handle the world. 
we cannot handle losing favor we cannot handle falling out of popularity and so we deny jesus there was another man who followed jesus in mark's gospel again quite an interesting uh, text mark 14 he says a certain young man verse 51 If you have your Bibles, open it. Maybe you've not noticed it before, or if you've noticed it, you've been intrigued, but never realized and went past it. A certain young man was following him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. Interesting. Why is Mark interspersed this line in this dramatic scene of Judas in the garden betraying Jesus and then them taking Jesus? who was that certain young man and some scripture scholars tell us it may be mark himself mark was the young man probably in whose house they had the passover feast and mark followed jesus he was intrigued by jesus probably and he was wearing only a linen cloth again very prophetic very profound prefiguring many times we will see this linen garment they wrapped him in a linen garment as a shroud and then there was a young man at the tomb at the resurrection again dressed in a robe of dazzling white linen and so the scripture scholars are telling us mark is trying to create a pattern mark is trying to put himself into that situation put you and me into that situation are you that certain young woman are you that certain young man who is following jesus only when it's convenient who is following jesus only when the going is good who is following jesus only when we get what we want but the moment there is an opposition or when the persecution is too much for us to handle we just throw everything away and we run off because we want to have nothing to do with this man are i set on this passing world or as the liturgy of the church tells us help us to live in this passing world with our eyes set on the world that will never end the death of jesus is something that we can reflect on and feel bad and feel sorrowful and the nails and the scourging and the crown but today we will not do that reflection we are not here to feel sorry for jesus we are here to feel sorry for ourselves it was our sin it is my sin that put jesus onto the cross and the cause of death often of a loved one has caused many dramatic changes to be made if someone has died for example without riding a helmet then the family you will see creates a foundation so that nobody ever else is is again dying in that fashion or if someone dies of a deep form of cancer or of some form of aids then you find that the family of that loved one creates a foundation or an institution to prevent as many as possible from dying from that form of death and yet when we know that the cause of jesus is death was sin how many of us are creating a foundation are doing all that we can are we going across the world to tell people please stay away from sin are we even doing that for ourselves is really jesus the loved one then do i really love jesus or am i just doing lip service the lord is calling us to look into our hearts what am i ready to sacrifice for jesus am i ready to let go of sin jesus is pointing his finger at me and you tonight or this morning or whenever you are watching jesus is asking you and me are you ready to let go the young man let go of his linen garment also a sign of vulnerability in his nakedness before the lord we are all naked he sees us as we are the masks that we wear can fool the world but the lord can see us through and through and the lord knows our hearts and the lord is inviting us he is inviting us to stand at the tree much like adam and eve stood at the tree and and the great scripture writers tell us that eve out of her disobedience adam out of his disobedience was at the tree and she looked at that tree and it was good to the eyes it looked like it would make her wise it was good to look at it was good for the body and we know later in scripture the lust of the flesh the lust of the eye the pride of life all of those combine all sins put together 
and Eve was faced with that choice, pleasure or obedience. And it's so easy for us to point to Eve and say, how could you do this? Or to point to Adam and say, how could you do this? But I challenge you to look in the mirror and you will see Eve. And I will see Adam. Because you and I are faced with that choice day in and day out. And today we are not here to mourn Jesus. But we are here to mourn our sins. Because that is what put him onto the cross. And we are here to celebrate his love. Which is what draws us out of sin. Because as we begin today, the Navina of the Divine Mercy, we will celebrate that mercy that flowed from his heart, the blood and water that flowed from the side of Christ, which became the fountain of sacramental life in the church. And so today, we picture ourselves at the foot of that tree, and much like Eve, because of her disobedience, reached out and plucked the fruit of that tree and put it into her stomach. Mary, the new Eve, stood at the foot of the tree in Calvary and plucked the fruit from her womb. Blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus, and put it onto the tree of Calvary. Put it on the cross for you and I to be free. For he has carried nailed to the cross are all our sins. Cursed is the one who hangs on the tree. And so you and I have been given that freedom, that great exchange that took place on the cross where Jesus takes upon himself our sins, where he becomes the one, the lamb led to the slaughter and we become Barabbas, Bar Abba. Bar Abba, if you know Jewish uh, tradition, Bar means son of, and therefore he said Simon Bar Jonah, Simon son of John, or Bar Timaeus, the blind man, was son of Timaeus. And so Bar Abbas is son of the father, son of Abba. You and I become sons of Abba, free because the son of Abba went onto the cross for me and for you. And you and I have been given that authority now of being sons and daughters of God. And what are we doing with that authority? Are we using that authority to crush the head of Satan? Because that authority is given to you and me as baptized children of God. Are we using it? To truly be grateful for what Jesus has done for us on the cross, not just be sorrowful. These are not sorrowful mysteries, but grateful mysteries. To look at Jesus on the cross and be grateful for what he has done, because I should have been on that cross instead of him. Indeed, I should have been on the cross instead of Jesus. But Jesus had to complete on that cross the entire plan of the Father. And here's where we come to the fourth cup, where Jesus said, I thirst. Remember in Mark 15, 23, we are told that he refuses the cup, which was of wine mixed with myrrh. And it's interesting because myrrh was added often to the wine to dull the pain for those who wanted to just somehow endure and go through that suffering, often given to those who were crucified. But Jesus refused it. He didn't want any shortcuts. He wanted to take the whole of our sin, of yours and mine and of the whole world upon himself. And so he refused that cup. But later he said, I thirst. He thirsts for you and he thirsts for me. Mother Teresa puts those beautiful words, I thirst, in every chapel the missionaries of charity are all over the world, reminding them that every time they serve, they are quenching the thirst of Jesus. And so Mark 15.35 says, Later they gave him sour wine or vinegar, and he drank it. He completed those four cups that were part of the Passover, and therefore they are one set of four cups. You cannot separate Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday. It is one celebration, and therefore the Catholic Church has it absolutely right when they say that every single Eucharist commemorates, represents, not represents, but represents Calvary. Every time we come to the cross, we come to the Eucharist. Every time we come to the Eucharist, we come to Calvary. Jesus
Today begins the Navina to the Feast of the Divine Mercy. The first day's intention. Today, bring to me all mankind, especially all sinners, and immerse them in the ocean of my mercy. In this way, you will console me in the bitter grief into which the loss of souls plunges me. Most merciful Jesus, whose very nature it is to have compassion on us and to forgive us, do not look upon our sins, but upon our trust which we place in your infinite goodness. Receive us all into the abode of your most compassionate heart, and never let us escape from it. We beg this of you by your love, which unites you to the Father and the Holy Spirit. Eternal Father, Turn your merciful gaze upon all mankind, and especially upon poor sinners, all enfolded in the most compassionate heart of Jesus. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, show us your mercy, that we may praise the omnipotence of your mercy for ever and ever. Amen. You expired, Jesus, but the source of life gushed forth for souls, and the ocean of mercy opened up for the whole world. O fount of life, unfathomable divine mercy, envelope the whole world and empty yourself out upon us. O blood and water, which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in you. O blood and water, which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in you. O blood and water, which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus, as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world eternal father we I offer you the body and blood soul and divinity of your dearly beloved son our lord jesus christ in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world, 
for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world eternal father mm. i offer you the body, the body and blood soul and, and divinity of your dearly beloved son our lord jesus christ in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful for passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world eternal father for we offer, offer you the body and blood soul and divinity of your dearly beloved son our lord jesus christ in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world eternal father mm. i offer you the body, the body and blood soul and, and divinity of, of your dearly beloved son our lord jesus christ in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world holy god holy, holy mighty one, one holy immortal one, one have mercy on us and on the whole world holy god holy, holy mighty one holy immortal one, one Have mercy on us and on the whole world Holy God Holy mighty one Holy immortal one have mercy on us and on the whole world Eternal God in whom mercy is endless and the treasury of compassion inexhaustible look kindly upon us and increase your mercy on us that in difficult moments we might not despair nor become despondent but with great confidence submit ourselves to your holy will which is love and mercy itself amen in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen, amen.